What is up guys, today is February 1st, 2016, and today I've got something pretty cool to show you guys. So I think my elevator subscribers will enjoy this video quite a bit. So today we are in my room looking at my newly acquired 1989 Dover Impulse Elevator Car Operating Panel. Now for those of you who have not been subscribed to me or not staying updated with everything, um, you're probably asking yourselves where the heck did he get this panel from? Where the heck did he get a full Dover car panel from? Um, well, first of all, um, I myself, with the help of a contractor, pulled this panel from the elevator on Friday. So this panel has only been off the elevator for about three days. Um, from a building uh, that is uh, about five minutes from my house here in my town that is set for demolition here pretty soon. Actually, the, the demolition on the building has already started. Um, and uh, they still got quite a bit to do, but they've been moving through the building fast. So I basically talked to the contractor, and um, I asked him if um, some parts could be saved for me from both the elevator and the fire alarm system, and um, he pulled all the parts I asked for, and then on Friday I uh, got to actually go to the building and help him uh, pull this panel. And um, so we pulled this panel together, it took about half an hour to pull this thing out of the stupid elevator car, but... It was a pain, and then I got this, and then the, I'll, I'll make this in a I'll make a separate video of this. But I got all the hull fixtures, as well as the interior car lantern too. But that'll be a separate video. So um, here it is in my room. Um, so basically, I'm the second person on YouTube to own a Dover Impulse car panel. Um, Candy Cart, he owned a Dover Impulse car panel, and then he gave it recently to Diesel Ducey. So, so now uh, Diesel Doozy has Candy Cart's um, Dover Impulse panel. and um, But when Candy Cart had it, when he first got it back in 2012, he, he made a good overview video of it. So I'm not going to go too in-depth with this. Um, if you want to see the, the inner workings of the panel and uh, see some detail, I'll, I'll put the link in the description to his overview of his um, ThyssenKrupp slash Dover panel. So, uh, basically, I'm just going to do a quick overview of this thing, um, explain some of the features it's got, compare, um, com compare mine to his, compare mine to Diesel Doozy's, actually, and um, stuff like that. And uh, keep in mind, I just watched the overview video he did, so it's going to be a little bit hard not to copy some of the things he uh, said in the video. So, um, if I do say something that's similar to what Candy Cart said, I give full credit to him for that. So, um, I'd like to get started with a quick size comparison. Oh, and by the way, before I get started, um, here's the building the panel came out of. The J.P. Morgan Chase building at 2000 South Naperville Road here in Wien, Illinois. Let's let the camera focus in on that. J.P. Morgan, 2000 South Naperville Road. It was a three-story bank building built in 1989. And, um, like I said, the demolition started and they're going to uh, be building a CVS there. So a CVS pharmacy is going to be go, uh, going on the property. So yeah, now I'm going to start with a quick size comparison. This is the new Dover Impulse panel, and this is my Epco Circle Line elevator panel. I've had this since, uh, I've had this a couple years now. You guys have seen this before. This is the Epco Circle Line. And just for the quick size comparison, I am on my knees now. The Epco Circle Line is less than half the size of the Dover Impulse panel, as you guys can see. So this thing is massive, and like I said, it was a pain to get out of uh, the elevator, and it was a pain to uh, carry down the stairs, get it in the truck, and get it up here to my my room. So, um, but I'm so glad I've got this, uh, because these panels really are cool, and it's so cool to have uh, pretty much the full elevator panel here sitting in my room. This is pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, start the overview of it. Let's start, um, do I want to start at the bottom or the top? I'm going to start at the top with the floor indicator. So up at the top of the panel um, with the Dover Impulse elevators, you've got um, the floor indicator. This is actually the floor indicator here and um, the thing that Dover would commonly use are the fake LEDs on these indicators. And um, basically there's just a bunch of dots which show uh, the letter or the number and then behind that are two bulbs which uh, light up when you're at that floor 
as with the um, unlike the real LEDs where each individual dot that makes up the thing lights up by itself and it can all stay in one spot. So Dover commonly uses these indicators. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Let's get my flashlight. So as you can see, you can actually see the numbers right here. I do plan on powering this panel up, powering up the indicator. As you guys can see, it's been a little, little bit uh, like vandalized. I don't know why that would happen in a bank building, but you guys can see all the characters behind there. LL, one, not really with all those scratches, but two and three. And uh, underneath you have the capacity plate, which says Dover on it, capacity 2,500 pounds. This was a, this was a standard 2,500 pound capacity passenger elevator with uh, center opening doors. All that good stuff, and in your uh, in the middle we got the emergency light, which pops on if uh, there is a power outage when you're in the elevator. Um, below that we got the certificate of inspection. This uh, basically states the date that the elevator was was, was inspected. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, date the elevator was inspected, and um, just verifies that it has been inspected by a professional, and that the elevator is in safe operating condition. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys uh, read that. Let's focus in on that. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys read that little description there. This was an oil hydraulic elevator. Uh, beneath here we got the uh, the fire service operating instructions for the firefighters. So uh, they know how to operate the fire service feature on this elevator. Pretty straightforward. Uh, tons of elevators have these signs. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you have seen uh, a demo of an elevator fire service before, you probably already know how this works. Below here we got the floor buttons and the key switches. I'll start at the bottom from here. So at the very bottom here we got the door open button. The door open button uh, says, you, you know, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You press the button. If the elevator is on a certain floor, the door will open. And... Um, this also plays an important role in the fire service function. To the left of, or to the right of that, we got a manual stop run switch. So, um, unlike Candy Cart's panel, which has the uh, key switch here, which takes the Dover H1848 key, this is a manual stop switch. So you can flip it up to stop if you want to stop the elevator car. And I'm pretty sure with the manual switches, that'll also ring the alarm bell. Let's flip it back to run. Here's the alarm bell button. When you press it and hold it, it rings an alarm bell in the shaft um, to notify others that you are in trouble, in distress, uh, that uh, the elevator has stopped and that you need help. Um, to the right of that is the door close button. It does the opposite of the door open button. You just press it. And um, on this particular elevator, it did work in the regular service. The door actually did close the second you press this button uh, on this particular elevator because uh, keep in mind, I, I was on this elevator before this panel was taken off. I have been on this elevator several times before this panel was taken off. Um, so as I recall correctly, the door did close the second you press the door open button, but this also, like the door open button plays a major role in the fire service operation. Above here, we got the key switch, or the, um, well, yeah, the key switches, but mainly the floor buttons. Now, on a normal Dover elevator with the buttons, uh, with on a normal four-floor Dover elevator like this, they could fit all four of these buttons onto one panel, but they didn't because, keep in mind, this was a bank building, so it was very high security. So they did have uh, floor lockouts on LL, 2, and 3. Uh, and in order to accommodate the, the um, space for the lockout switches, they had to um, have two panels of buttons here. And I kind of like how this is set up with two buttons on each on each uh, panel. So um, the first floor does not have the lockout switch on it, which is, um, that makes sense since that was the lobby. Um, the basement has a lockout switch on it and uh, two and three have the lockout switches on them. Um, the basement, uh, Commonly, when I would go to ride this elevator, they would have these two key switches on, indicating that LL and 2 were locked off. I could only go from uh, the first floor to the third floor and back. They would commonly have the third floor open, and that's probably because that opened to a desk. Floor 2 like could have been where they kept the money. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, And the basement, that was locked off for some reason. I don't think they had anything too big down there, but the basement was pretty much always locked off each time I was there. 
Now, I thought I'd point out about these key switches really quick that these do not take, you would think, um, on all Dover elevators, the lockouts are supposed to take the Dover H1848 key. These, uh, let's get my keys here. These switches do not take the H1848 key. They actually, in fact, I don't know what key these switches take. Um, let's get the H1848, and you can see that um, these are nowhere near the right keys. This is the 1848, the standard Dover lockout switch. And it does not even come close to going in either way. So I thought it might be the 2395. That didn't work. But I actually tried the 2389 fire key, which is which works this switch up here. And if you stick it in just right, you can get the key to churn. Not that it's the key that churns it. So, um... I have tried four different keys, the 1848, 1846, 2395, and 2389, none of which correctly turn these switches. So um, I'm kind of thinking that these switches, although they do look like the, the standard Dover key switches, they could be custom, which would make some sense considering it's a bank building, like I was saying before, bank building, high security. Um, so these could be custom key switches. However, if I did stick the fire key in just right, just a tiny bit, I got uh, that switch to churn. But all these are on off so that they could give the the building demolition crew access to all the floors when the elevator was still in service. Um, finally, the third panel up here is devoted to your key switches. We've got three different key switches here, and um, there's the fire service phase two switch, the fan light switch, and the independent service switch. Starting with the most basic, the fan light switch. Let's uh, get my keys. Fan light takes the, on a Dover elevator, commonly takes the Dover H2395 key. And um, there's the H2395. Have not used this key in a long time. Um, even though the camera's not focusing, I apologize for that. Stick the key in. And currently, um, like I said, this is a two function switch. It controls the lights and the fan. And when you stick, uh, currently it's on low, indicating the fan will be on low. Starting if, uh, put it in, turn it all the way to the right, or to the left. That would be for if the, the elevator car got stuck and you uh, put it in the lobby and uh, you waited for the maintenance to show up, you would probably turn both the light and the fan off to in indicate that the elevator car is not in service. Turn it to the, the left, or to the right one, I'm sorry, I'm getting my directions mixed up today. That way you'll just have the cab lights on. If you like, don't want the uh, the fan on, you just can have the light on. If you want, to, uh, if you turn the key to the right one more click, that'll keep the light on and that'll turn your um, fan on low. Turn it right uh, to the six o'clock position. That's fan high, and of course the light. The function to the left of that, the switch to the left of that is the independent service switch. And uh, independent service, it's abbreviated in-depth serve on uh, Dover Impulse. And the independent service is a function that's commonly found on elevators. And uh, it's basically used for like moving and uh, for moving large objects and for moving large groups of people. And when you turn it on, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that here. It takes the same H2395 key. You stick it in, pretending the elevator would be closed. Now you turn it on. The door on the elevator would open up. And uh, from there, to get the elevator to move anywhere, you have to, on Dover Impulse, you have to hold the floor button till the door is completely closed. And then you would actually be taken to your destination. And then after you reach the destination, the door opens up and it stays open. The elevator will not, so uh, it'll bypass all floor calls. So you can uh, you use the elevator without uh, you can use it without uh, being interrupted. So it's it's like basically non-interrupted full control over the elevator when you have independent on. Let's turn independent service off. Finally, this uh, area of the panel sometimes they'll have an extra panel up here where it'll have this whole this whole uh, uh, this row of controls here. And it'll have uh, instructions that are about the size of that. But on, on this one, um, as they commonly do, they just put this on here and they, they added extra instructions up here. The, uh, like what the fire service is, is basically if, if, if there's a fire in the building, the fire department can come in and uh, they can activate the fire service phase one recall 
on the elevator by uh, turning the key switch out in the lobby, which by the way, this is the phase one, this is the phase one fire recall key switch, which is activated by the firefighters in the lobby. Or more commonly, it's, it's activated by the, the smoke detector on the fire alarm system. So if a smoke detector in the elevator shaft, the lobby or the machine room is activated, um, it'll like set off the fire alarm system and uh, the, the buzzer will pop on on the elevator that will come on and it'll say return to main floor or there'll be a fire hat there. And uh, it'll like buzz the elevator down to the recall floor. The drawers will open and it'll be completely uh, like no one can do anything to it till the firefighters come in with the H2389 key. Like I'm showing here. Put the key in. Turn it all the way to... Let's see if I can do this without messing up my ring. Turn it all the way to on. And from there you can take control of the elevator to go fight fires uh, on the other floors and to rescue like handicapped people and so on and so forth. Um, to operate the elevator in fire service, it's pretty self-explanatory. I really don't need to explain it. Yeah, I'm just not gonna explain it. You, I'll, I'll put a, uh, a like demo of fire service in the description, someone else that has done that, but that's your call cancel button. If you press a floor and you don't wanna go there, that's when the call cancel button does work and you can cancel out your call. Uh, finally, so that, that concludes the button portion of it. Now, this elevator um, did have a replaced uh, phone. So down here is the, uh, down here you've got the emergency phone. And if the elevator gets stuck, um, typically on, on most overs there'd be a door here which you'd pull open. Um, but for some reason that door was torn out and they uh, simply slapped a newer, more ADA compliant phone over the whole thing. So they, uh, they used the existing screw holes and they, they drilled two new screw holes in the bottom of this panel to accommodate this uh, new ADA compliant phone, which was probably put in sometime in the, uh, sometime between probably the 90s and the, uh, and uh, 2012, I believe. So, um, but like typically if you see candy carts, uh, overview of his panel, there's supposed to be a door here which pulls open and then you can pick up the phone behind there. But this is, uh, a more ADA compliant phone. You just press the button and you can speak. I believe that tiny hole there is the microphone and then you got the speaker there. You can talk to the uh, the, the police if you need uh, help getting out of the elevator. This can be programmed to dial a, a bunch of different phone numbers. I'm gonna see if I can get this going. Uh, see if I can somehow program it to call my phone number. So not to make this video too long, let's just go over, um, I'm not gonna show you guys the back of this panel, but I thought I, I'd talk about the, the buttons on, um, sorry, I'm talking way too fast today. I thought I'd talk about the buttons on this panel. Um, two of the buttons on this panel are actually are actually replaced. Now this panel is from the 80s, as I was saying, it's from 1989. This uh, panel has two different kinds of buttons on it. Um, these two buttons, the one and the three buttons on this panel are replaced. So you can hear the difference, like when I press the 80s buttons, which you use the micro switches, and the 90s buttons, which use the uh, the spring and the contact, I'm not sure how you say it, the spring and the contacts in the back. So like here's the 1980s buttons. You can tell that they got a, a pretty uh, firm, um, kind of plain sound to them, as where these ones click. There's the two button the 80s and the 90s with the three button. So there's that. And uh, the final thing I, I point out about this panel, that about concludes this whole panel. It's a pretty neat panel. Now, I just thought I'd show you very quickly the um, how much we had to go through to get this panel off as far as cutting the wires. It's getting kind of dark out. I, I apologize for the lighting in the, vid the video, but right there, is the wires we had to cut. I, uh, the, the contractor and, and I um, did tons of uh, cutting of these, these wires. You can just see this is a complete mess here, but I just like wanted to leave plenty of slack just in case um, I do ever decide to wire up the floor indicator or something. I, I, I plan to wire this panel up to make it do something. I'm not, you know, I plan to wire up the floor indicator or something, but first I have to find um, 
the wires that go to the, fl the floor indicator and the like voltage uh, the panel takes because I definitely do not want to to blow anything out on, on this panel. So I um, maybe I'll, I'll get get that light wired up so I can get, get that to pop on. Maybe I'll get the buttons to light up. I'm not sure. So um, now the final question you guys may be asking that there may be one more question you guys are asking. Um, like, did I get the Dover buzz? Sorry guys, my camera just cut out. So, like, some of you may have been, uh, like, wondering if I got the Dover buzz. And like I was saying before, the Dover buzz is the, uh, the elevator's floor passing chime. And, uh, tons of Dover elevators out here have got this little, er, sound that they make when the, uh, when you change floors. And, um, tons of people have, like, wanted to know um, like what makes this sound like where's the sound come from and do you get it if you get the car panel? So I'm gonna be showing you guys the Dover buzz here I uh, did make sure it is not a part of the car panel, but I did I did decide to take out the Dover buzz on this elevator So today I'm gonna be revealing the Dover buzz, which is right here This here is the Dover buzz That little er uh, sound that the elevator makes when it passes a floor. This is a Star Micronics PMB-24 mini buzzer. Let's see if I can get this focused in. It's a DC 20, it's a 24 volts DC mini buzzer. And uh, like, like I was saying, if you get, uh, this is why Candy Cart or like Diesel Doozy's panel does does not have this on here because this actually, like, like I said, this did not come with the car panel. This comes out, there's a tiny piece of like metal behind the car panel that this is screwed into and that metal's like welded to the back, uh, to the box that's behind the car panel. And um, you pretty much have to unscrew the screws out of these little holes here and from there you can pull out the buzzer and then I cut the wires to it. But this here is the Dover buzz. And um, so this sounds when the elevator passes floors, and this also sounds when the elevator like goes into nudge mode or into fire service. So as a special treat today, um, although I'm not going to be trying to power up any of this yet, we are going to be hearing we are going to be hearing this Dover buzz. So let's get one more look at it. There's the positive and there's the, the negative inputs. I just have to touch the wires there. And I have two 12 volt batteries down here, which we are gonna use to test the buzzer out. And uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Okay guys, so it's gotten kind of dark now. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the flash here. Here's the buzzer, as I was just showing before. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, give this thing a little test. So let's first simulate the floor passing chime which is what this thing did the most. I have the wires stripped. Just going to go ahead and uh, touch the wire. Simulate the floor passing chime. So now I'm going to like simulate if the elevator got put into nudge mode or onto fire service. There you go. That's basically it. That's your, your Dover buzz. Like right there. And that did come straight off this elevator. That's your, your Dover buzz right there. So, um, I, I will have a video of these guys up pretty soon, but that concludes tour of this Dover Impulse Elevator Panel. Thank you guys for watching, and that'll be it.